Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of my Pokemon Platinum Sprite Editing Tutorial. This time I want to show you guys how to work with battle sprites. Whether it's the uh, ball throw that your player has in the beginning of a battle, the versus faces that show up before a battle, or the person you're fighting is their, uh, their front sprite. So what you can do to find these is... Go into Tink again, open up your ROM, and we will start inside a Poke Tool and Trainer Graphic right here. So I'm going to look into the back sprites first. All right, and these are your side of the battle. So if you say want to edit your own character, he would be the very top sprite here. And we can clean it up mostly by bringing it down to 64 and expanding the entire width so you can see each of the frames that this ball throw has. Okay, and then once it's down to 800, you can export it, drop it on your desktop, and put it here into a sprite again. Now you can see that he's still not perfectly together and that is unfortunately on purpose. This is the way that it is stored inside the ROM as far as I can tell. So what we did from here is that we actually were able to make a little layout you can use that you can just kind of copy like so. Put a new layer on top of your image and paste it here. Okay, and you can see now that this guy's already together at the top, but in the next frame, he's actually split up here and here. And it continues that way all the way down. Also, you'll notice that uh, for the second frame, he is one, I, I guess, eight, eight pixel high box higher than the one on the left. But the way that that balances out is that they are then even on the bottom. So you just come on down here, paste again, and you can continue to do so for each two frame set, like so. And then you can use this layout to piece the sprite back together for when you want to draw over it and make your own, and then bring them back in here. And then once you do that, you'll get a equally mosaic amalgamation, like this guy, right here. And I can show you he's exactly the same before, like before by copying him, going onto the bottom layer of our original guy here, and pasting. Aha! And he'll fit just the same in the layout. And now you will want to, just like before again, take the palette from the original, the save palette, put it onto the desktop, no, 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 no. All the way up. Oh, too high. There we go. Desktop. Call it J Palette. Like so. That show up over there. Cool. And then we can load that palette. Like so. And then just make sure that our guy is indexed. Before doing that, though. <laughs> Or I guess even after, if you do it a little early and you index it, you'll just see that the boxes change color because now the, all of the layers have to use colors from that uh, palette there. But we don't need that anymore, so we're just going to remove it. If you try to save this with layers, it'll tell you that PNGs can't have those for obvious reasons. So you just remove it, get down to what you want, and you're good to go from there. So you can just go ahead and save it. Come back in the tink, and again, like I showed you in the last video, for RGCN files, you want to select Replace Palette, so that when it comes in, it will actually have the colors you selected before, again, as long as they are under 16. So, that should be good to go from there. Okay, and next, we're going to look at the front sprites of the trainers. We can minimize this folder and unpack this one. Now, the very top one, again, is your guy, which is, you know, much simpler, much smaller than a single frame. However, you don't ever fight yourself, so this doesn't really matter. 
front spines are generally for uh, other characters that you want to change. Like uh, if you ever fight your not not your rival, I guess your your alternate Dawn, or come all the way down because your rival is animated and he is number three fifteen, if I am correct. There he is, and this uses the same layout that the ball throw one did earlier so you can just export this and change it the same so that'll work out okay but there is one thing i want to show you so my example is going to be 326 nope no no so what we did for our run is that we made uh other members of the uh, challenger approaching team into the elite four and they got to pick their own uh, customized team that wasn't type themed to be battled at the end. It was really fun, and we changed their sprites to look like them. And uh, so we did this one here, and the one I will show you an example of will be Bertha. Okay, I'm just gonna get it all the way out to its full size. They kept her simple with just three frames of animation, like that. You can export it, put it on the desktop, and just like before. There she is. Put it in a sprite. Now, I believe, just like the first one, if we copy this and paste it over her. Yep, it's the exact same layout here as well. Okay, but that's not what I want to show you. We made Bertha into our music guy, Wander. Who is, as you can tell, based off the... Uh, the Giovanni fake guy from Heart Gold Soul Silver. And uh, let's see here. You'll see here at the bottom, there is a gap that doesn't exist for Bertha. And I think this is a limitation in Tink. But if I was to import this sprite back in, even just the original, when you view them in the game, you'll see this glitched out box in the lower right that looks so weird. And it, it took us a long time to figure it out, but uh, apparently it's something with, if it tries to encrypt the file and it has colors other than the background at the very bottom of the sprite, it'll cause that box. So you just come over here and you add some uh, rows to it. So it doesn't have the same dimensions, but it still works just fine. As far as I can tell, it doesn't throw off their position inside the battle. So, that's a little quick fix for that for anyone trying to do this because it drove me nuts trying to figure out why that was happening. Uh, so yeah, 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 that should work out. And then once you've got your guy here, just like before again. Oh, actually I can't do it here. Normally in these videos I copy and paste it over it, but since it's a different size, I will just do a save over. So, save as come back up to no, oh, right here and 330 okay over right okay now you should be yes that one there okay now the, the file names I don't know if I've mentioned this before don't matter I just let them stay as the original file names so I remember where the heck they are but you can in them whatever you want if that works better for you anyway so you come on in again you replace the palette import and there they are and it works out really good and you can see down here that you have the padding even though the original file was that big and now that I have shown you all that I can show you one of the more complicated things I had to figure out with editing uh, Pokemon Platinum and that was if you change your character gym leaders or the elite four when you battle you have a versus face that shows up and uh that's not located here in the front spreads i had to dig and dig and dig until we finally found the location which is in not pokey tool but graphic field encounter effect narc you unpack that one Okay, and Bertha, I believe, was number 88. Nope, nope, so close. 92, 
There she is. Okay. So, as always, bring this all the way down to 64. And expand that out. And that is the face that shows up when it's like, your character versus Bertha. And, uh, you're actually being lied to right here. Because the other challenge was that once it was in, you saw me double click this palette file and view it. However, I'll bring it back down again, but however, that's not actually the palette that affects it when it's showing up in the ROM. It's actually being affected by the palette of the front sprite, like the one we just edited. So actually, I should not have, uh, I should not have collapsed that uh, other file here. So we'll go back under front, come all the way back down to 326. Even though this one, they have the palette on the bottom, which is weird. Oh, wait, no. 330? Yeah, there we are. Okay. So I double click on this palette, then I come all the way back up. No, let me back up. If I can keep this number straight in my head, I need to go not 88, but 92. So don't click on that one. Click on this one. View it. This is the horror that is Bertha right now. <laughs> there we go. So what you need to do is if you edit this, you need to make sure it has the same palette file as the original one. So I'm going to export this uh, to the desktop, like everything else we've done so far. Plop it into a sprite, and just like before, again, 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 we have somebody already made. Oh, that was right there. There we are. And so if I switch between this one and this one, yeah, they have the same palette. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this one, control A, control C, paste it over, just to show you guys again the proper way in which you need to come in. And we're gonna take it from this one, just to as a proof of concept. Save the palette. Let me wander palette. Okay, it's like that. That should show up there, perfect. Come back to this one, load palette. Okay. And now, oh, I've got too many tabs open. Okay, here we go. They should match just fine. Okay. I just want to make sure also that this is indexed. Mm, perfect. All right, so I'll take that. Save it. I see the horror change into an actual colored sprite. And from here, you don't want to use replace palette. I think I used something similar in the last video when showing you how to deal with the flying bird who also has this kind of palette in, uh, dependency. So we're going to keep this one, swap to original palette selected, do the import, bring in... This one? Yeah, it's like that. Okay. Looks like it didn't quite work there. So if this happens, I guess I will try to replace palette. Like so. Okay. Now the question is, now that he shows up correctly, if I come back down to his front sprite, which is 325. Oh, I'm sorry, 3.30. Oh, God. <laughs> that doesn't quite work either. So, I think when this happens, you do it one more time. You come on down into uh, your back guy. He's all replaced. Keep that one. And now when we come back up... Do, 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 do. Okay, was it 92? I think it was 92. Ah! Okay, okay, I remember how to do it now. So for some reason, when you import an image with Tink, I think it bases the palette on when the colors first show up in the actual sprite image. So for this image, they show up in a different order 
than they do for the front sprite we added in before, even though we force them to have the same palette inside of uh, a sprite. So to get around this, you can be sneaky and double click the uh, related palette inside of this NARC. So it looks good again. And then do replace palette, import, and just bring in the actual front sprite here. This image will not work. It's way too big, it's distorted, but it'll fit in here for long enough that you can now have replaced the palette and uh, 91 here will now match palette 331 related to the front sprite. Then immediately, without clicking on anything else, uh, you want to come back in here, do swap to original palette, import, and pick the uh, and pick the versus face. Okay, as long as that worked, you come back down to 331. There you are. Double click it, and you can see that the uh, front sprite so looks good. Come up to 92, view it, and he looks good as well. This may take a couple tries. Hence the jump cut a second ago. <laughs> but if you have some patience with it, as long as you come down here and to the palette for the front sprite, double click it and view both the front sprite and again, it's related versus face like this and they both look good, they'll both look good inside the game. And then you're good to go to save the ROM from here. Okay, and that should be everything I know about the back sprites, the front sprites, and the versus sprites, which is generally all you need to do for spriting in terms of actual battles that you have in the game. You may also want to look at my previous video if you haven't seen it already to see how you'd want to change other characters or your own characters overworld sprite when you're walking around. Just like I mentioned in the last video, all the tools uh, are going to be included in a zip file you'll find in the description of this video. And that will include the layouts you saw me do to show you how those sprites are broken into the pieces. I figure that might help you guys out if you're trying to learn how to do that too. So alright, and as always, if you have any questions or any comments on an easier way to do some of this stuff, please leave it below. I'm sure to help out everyone who's watching this video here. And from there, y'all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everybody!